Today, I want to talk to you guys about the allegations against Melanie Martinez. This former television show contestant turned pop star was accused of serious crimes by a close friend named Timothy Heller. Many fans turned against Melanie over these allegations, but others questioned the legitimacy of Timothy's claims. Certain things don't add up, and while there's always two sides to a story, there's also a third, the truth. So let's get into it. So Melanie Martinez is a 26-year-old singer and songwriter who gained fame in 2012 after appearing on the vocal talent show The Voice. Don't you know that you're toxic, intoxicate me now, with the love now, I think I'm ready now. Although Melanie did not win the talent show, she did score a record deal afterwards, and she's been able to drop two albums since, one titled Crybaby and another titled K-12. through I would be lying if I said I wasn't a fan of Melanie's because I definitely am, but I think it's important to separate the artists from their music and recognize when someone has done something wrong. That being said, I'm not going into this video with the mindset that Melanie is guilty because we need to look at both sides. And I also want to bring up some inconsistencies in Timothy's story because I think it's important to assess this situation before you decide whether you're going to continue supporting this artist or stop supporting them. Let me introduce you guys to Timothy Heller. She's also an American singer-songwriter who lives in LA, and she's a former close friend of Melanie Martinez. Timothy met Melanie back in 2014 after Melanie gained some fame from The Voice, but before her album Cry Baby was released. Well, in December 2017, Timothy came out with the claims that Melanie R-worded her. Of course, I can't say certain words on YouTube, but did things with her without her consent. She actually told Newsweek that she remained silent about this because the voice star, Melanie Martinez, wasn't a man. That's a point I've tried to make before on my channel, is that not all criminals are men. Women are also fully capable of taking advantage of others. Well, according to Timothy, Melanie actually harmed her on June 25th, 2015. They were playing some flirtatious game with handcuffs, and one thing led to another. Let's visit Timothy's original statement that she put on Twitter. She put about four pages worth of text on Twitter explaining what Melanie allegedly did to her. Here's her original post. I have kept this secret for years, convincing myself that it wasn't a big deal and I wasn't hurt by it. The thought of accepting that my best friend R-worded me seems insane. Even typing that doesn't feel real to me. I started telling this story to those closest to me as somewhat of a joke. Haha, <laughs> can you believe this crazy night? But I began to get responses I wasn't expecting. Concerned ones. It's hard to say someone you loved R-worded you. Someone you still love. The thought of writing this and having the world see it terrifies me, especially because of who this person is. This was my best friend. She took me in, which I was so grateful for. I felt like I owed her my life, and my life began to revolve around hers. I had my own problems, but if I could focus on her life, I could put off dealing with my own inner turmoil for just a bit longer. Some of her fans became my fans, but their loyalty never strayed from her. They are dedicated. She's perfect. To the public, she could do no wrong. She's there for her fans, she gets it, she's different. When faced with a friend who really needed help though, I can honestly say she let me down completely. So I guess Timothy needed Melanie for some reason and Melanie let her down. During the most difficult time in my life, my rock bottom, her power and control over me grew and grew, and I was silenced. While being open about realizing how much help I needed, I was made to feel guilty. I had to apologize for having an extreme panic attack where I thought I was going to die because it ruined her night. Endless incidents like this, I had become a problem. Yet, through it all, I loved her. Codependency works in a lot of strange ways. In my relationship with this friend, I was dependent on helping her with her life. As soon as I needed a small bit of focus and support from my best friend, there was nothing for us to relate to each other about. 
Our friendship was about her. The power she had over me grew into me having a hard time saying no to her. I would do almost anything for her. One night during a sleepover, she became increasingly interested in my preferences. As someone who had previously been through some really intense things like SA, it's hard for me to talk about. I was obviously uncomfortable, but she was my best friend, so I tried to be open about it. The conversation never seemed to end though. So it seems like Melanie was really like trying to get to Timothy and what she was interested in physically. I had to work very early in the morning. She began asking me while in bed if I would do it with her. While being incredibly uncomfortable by her offer, I attempted to laugh it off. I had a boyfriend at the time and she knew that. He doesn't have to know. It's not a big deal. That's what she said to her. It went on for hours, asking me why I didn't want to, that it would be fun. I repeatedly said no. I had work in the morning. I wanted to sleep. I was exhausted. I attempted to sleep, but I was kept up the entire night by my friend friend begging me to sleep with her. It seems strange, but she was my best friend. I said no and thought that we could move on. The next night unfortunately went the exact same, regardless of my response the first night. So we're on night two of their sleepover. She was not giving up. If she had gotten the hint, she didn't care. I was exhausted. She convinced me to smoke weed, and since I've had a hard time saying no to her, I complied, thinking maybe then I'll just, you know, fall asleep and avoid the situation together. The same conversation began to happen, continuously trying to convince me that I was going to be okay and that it would be fun and it would feel good. I would say, my boyfriend would be so upset. I really need to sleep. I have work in the morning. I said every form of no I can think of. As I lay praying to fall asleep. She began touching my arm. I allowed this to happen. Maybe she would give up. This went on for maybe an hour. I got increasingly uncomfortable. I started giggling, saying that it tickled. In no way did I want to make this a inappropriate situation. Quote, can I just do this? Can I just touch your arm? Can I just touch your, your, your upper half? She began bartering with me. All I wanted to do was go to sleep. She began talking about the appearance of my chest and begged to just touch them. We didn't have to do anything else. I was just so exhausted and confused and high and belittled. I just allowed it to happen. This led to her touching the rest of me. I never said yes. I said no repeatedly, but she just used her power over me and broke me down. Just so there's no confusion, I was M-worded by my best friend. I lay still in shock, completely not reciprocating. I hate speaking so bluntly on this because it makes me extremely uncomfortable. But Melanie started getting, you know, more physical and getting oral with her and then started like going inside of her. Obviously, we can't say a lot of those words. That's what happened. The bottom line is that I need to always remind myself that I said no for two nights straight. It doesn't matter that I didn't resist during the action. I had been broken down. She knew I didn't want to. I made that clear. I didn't scream at her. I didn't force her off of me. One, because I loved her and two, because I just wanted it all to be over. We never talked about this night ever again. While it completely messed with my head, there was no way I could have been R-worded by my friend right? Our friendship ended because she decided she didn't have time for me anymore. To worry about me anymore, she cared too much about me. It was holding her back. I'm not too sure how to end this story. I am terrified of the response I'm going to get. The only reason I do this now is because I'm hoping because of recent events, people will believe me. If you begin to doubt the things that happened in this story, I beg you to imagine her role in this as being a man. Girls can R-word girls too. Best friends can our word best friends. Friendships do not equal consent. Silence does not equal consent. I wish it wasn't so hard for me to convince myself of these things. Obviously, that was a lot to unpack there. And again, I don't want to take everything with face value, but I definitely believe something happened here because it's not like she just made all this up for no reason, right? And actually, after she made that Twitter post with that whole story, Melanie did try contacting her 20 minutes after she released the tweet. It was the first time that Timothy actually heard from Melanie in over a year. She said she was sobbing when Melanie called her and she blocked her right away. Then Melanie tried to call Timothy's boyfriend Mikey and she actually sent him several text messages to put her into touch with Timothy. In one of the text messages from Melanie, she actually says that she dreamed about Timothy and that inspired her to get in touch. 
Melanie also suggests the services of a healer named Raven, which Timothy found really insane and deeply insulting because Melanie was like, you need a healer. You need to go get help. Like you've got issues. Here's my healer. Go hit them up. After Timothy posted that story, there was public outrage. And of course, Melanie could not stay quiet for long. She went to Twitter and she wrote, I am horrified and saddened by the statements and story told tonight by Timothy Heller. What she and I shared was a close friendship for a period of time. We came into each other's lives as we were both starting our careers as artists, and we tried to help each other. We both had pain in dealing with our individual demons and the new paths we were forging, but I truly felt like we were trying to lift each other up. She never said no to what we chose to do together. Interesting. So she didn't say yes, but she never said no. And although we parted ways, I am sending her love and light always. There's a lot to unpack when it comes to Melanie's statement, maybe even a little bit more than Timothy's, because I do feel like her wording is very deliberate. Again, notice how she says she never said no. Rather than saying it was consensual or she said yes, she just claims she never said no. That's actually a common excuse that people like this who commit, you know, our word use to try to justify their actions. In my opinion, it seems like Melanie just admitted to doing that with her and that she never said no just makes it sound even worse. So on the same day that Timothy put out her story on Melanie, that article that we referred to earlier was published in Newsweek, which I will talk about that article in a moment, but I want to talk about this YouTube video because five days after she posted that story, Timothy actually spoke to one of Melanie Martinez fan pages, and during this conversation, she shared a lot about what happened. Listen to Timothy explain this situation with her own words. So yeah, you were both high. I already asked you that, but because these people weren't here. Mel was, you guys were both high? We are both high, and I think that a lot of kids in here may not have smoked weed before, mm -hmm. so they don't really understand how it works, but it doesn't completely immobilize me, and it does not wipe my memory. Um, I don't really know what else. The, the weed was not an important part of the story. Mm -hmm. So, it was it, whose house was it at? I remember someone asking me that. Was it at Melanie's house? house? You were staying there? Was yes, my boyfriend was out of town. Oh, her boy. So she was dating someone when it happened? Both of our boyfriends were out of town. Yes, we both had boyfriends. So both Melanie and Timothy were high, and a lot of the fans ran with this narrative that maybe, you know, because Timothy is high, that's why, like, it all went down in, in you know, it miscommunications or something like that. But actually, Timothy clarifies that even being high really didn't affect her feelings on the situation. And after two days of saying no, Melanie should have known by this point that she didn't want to do this. But Timothy does claim that maybe, you know, being high kind of, like, slowed her down and stopped her from saying no as hard as she would have if she was sober, but at the same time, she was exhausted. How do you feel about people thinking that it was partially your fault it happened because you were high? Or because, like, you may not have said no? That's what some people are saying, not that I think that. Right. I mean, I only smoked weed the second day, so there was an entire day of me saying no and being sober. Um, the next day, it, just, it was just like, it was so much. I was so overwhelmed with her asking me and bothering me that I was just like, and I think I kind of listed that I also kind of smoked weed because maybe it would make me like fall asleep and I'd be able to like avoid this happening at all, you know? Yeah. But it, I said no up for, for a good while, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it just made it a little bit harder for me to like, it just made me give up easier maybe, but I mean, I had been bothered for two days. Right. There's one more snippet from this interview that I want to play you guys. And pretty much Timothy talks about how Melanie never did anything additional to her. And then they talk a little bit about Melanie's response and how pretty much Melanie just admitted to it in her response. If you guys do want to go check out this full interview, it will be linked below. But here it goes. Um, Did, has, did Mel ever try to do anything with you after that night or was it over? No. It was like it it was like it never happened. She never tried to do it again. Mm -mm. Mel confirmed it, yeah. Mel did in her response everyone is saying her response was not the brightest idea of a response. <laughs> I agree. Hmm. 
Okay, so now let's talk about the theory that maybe Timothy is lying about this situation with Melanie. I don't personally believe that Timothy is lying. I want to be upfront with you guys. that I'm just reporting on what people have said online. If you guys want to go and check out my source material, everything will be listed below. But we need to talk about some of the claims that Timothy has made. And I want to start off by talking about that Newsweek article. They reported on some damning claims that Timothy made about Melanie. And keep in mind, guys, that Timothy told Newsweek that this incident with Melanie went down on June 25th, 2015. Remember we talked about how Melanie and Timothy were playing some games, some flirtatious games with handcuffs before everything went down? Well, actually, Timothy took a picture of Melanie in these handcuffs and provided it to Newsweek. Here's that picture of Melanie in the handcuffs. And if you guys put your reading glasses on and you look at the very bottom, they write Martinez on the night in question in 2015, allegedly playing the game that Timothy claims that Melanie Melanie took way too seriously. And again, 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 emphasis on the part Martinez on the night in question in 2015, because that's a huge claim if you're saying like, okay, this is a picture from that night when it happened. And that was again, supposedly June 25th, 2015. You guys are probably like, damn it, Sloan, we know that it happened on June 25th, 2015. Why do you keep bringing that up? Well, actually that photo of Melanie, I don't believe it was taken on the night of the incident like what Newsweek reported. Melanie actually posted a picture on May 6, 2015 in an outfit that looks very similar to the one in that photo. I do want to recognize though that it looks like they have it like she has a different type of dress on because if you see like she's leaning over and her her like dress is kind of like bunching up over it's like that would not happen in the first picture because you can see that's a very like tight collar so something's a little bit different here. But I don't believe that that photo that Timothy submitted to Newsweek was actually taken on the night of the incident if the incident was on June 25th, 2015. And I want to be very like upfront with you guys that I believe and trust me, when you go through traumatic experiences, you can forget a lot of things. It doesn't mean that it did not happen because Melanie kind of confirmed that this happened in her message, but there's something up when it comes to this date. Timothy proved herself that this photo was taken on May 6, 2015, that same day that Melanie put that picture on Instagram wearing a very similar outfit and not the date of the incident. It also looks like Timothy posted a screen recording of her like camera roll to uh, Twitter and at some point someone was able to screenshot and see again that photo was taken on May 6th not on June 25th. So there's some discrepancies here when it comes to the date. But if the photo was so clearly taken in May, why would Timothy go and tell Newsweek that it was taken on the night of that incident? Obviously, that puts a bad taste in my mouth because it makes me think like, OK, well, I understand if you forget like when something happened because it was so traumatic, like holy crap. But at the same time, if you know the date is available because you've got the information right there, why not just tell them the actual date or at least give them a range? People also question whether Timothy was working with Newsweek to drop that article because she posted this whole story on December 4th, 2017 at 6 p.m. at night. 25 hours later, Newsweek had a full-blown article about this situation on their page. So part of me thinks that maybe Newsweek just like got into contact with her after she dropped that whole like scandalous story. But at the same time, people question whether, you know, was Timothy working with this Newsweek to try to like push this whole story and that's why she like provided them images and it's just not really adding up. In my opinion, I have a different opinion because I know how like the media works and news things and I could turn around a video real quick. If you give me something with a story and some receipts, I can have a video done for you in two hours, upload it on YouTube. So I don't know. I believe like, you know, if, if it was like within the same hour, I'll be like, holy crap, like that was really fast. But 24 hours later is not a big deal. But here's a little snippet from that interview we were listening to earlier where Melanie actually talks about the debate around that date that she was allegedly harmed by Melanie. Definitely. So, I mean, like, as of right now, just say the whole date thing, thing again. I've heard you say it a few times, but just so people can hear. About the date? Yeah, about the date. Okay, so the only reason that I told Newsweek that it was on the 25th is because I remember posting that picture of me with the half black and half purple uh, wig the day after. But it was two years ago and I could very well be wrong. Um, you know, maybe I posted it 
a couple days later and and I don't know like there's so many like possibilities but like that's what I remembered it's definitely around that time and also Melanie didn't say that it never happened so at the end of the day the date isn't a big deal here the big deal is that melanie may have harmed her best friend at that time but there's actually a channel on youtube named piper sweeney and they really took a deep dive into this situation i'm going to link their video below if you'd like to go and check it out but i want to pull some receipts from their video because they claim that timothy's story is impossible because actually melanie was in new york at the time on june 25th 2015 so how would have she been able to, you know, get in contact with Timothy? But actually, it looks like Melanie was flying home from New York. Obviously, she wasn't driving. I don't know why they put it in the driving mode, but she was flying home. So she could have been back to L.A., you know, later that afternoon. So that's one argument that Timothy is lying because uh, Melanie was across the country at this time. And if you think, OK, so it happened on June 25th, then that would have been day two of their sleepover. So what about day one? Melanie wasn't even there. So are things adding up? Piper Sweeney was really looking into the details on this one because actually Timothy posted a picture with Melanie on June 29th, 2015. But the picture was actually taken on June 26th, 2015, which would have been the date after the alleged, you know, um, situation went down. And if you guys remember that last snippet of the interview I played for you guys, Timothy talks about how she determined which date this went on and how she gave that date to Newsweek because actually Timothy didn't mention a date in her original post so when she gave that date to Newsweek I was kind of like oh crap because that could really get her into some trouble and it has. So this was the photo that Timothy was referring to and as you guys can see it was posted on June 26, 2015 and this is how she like came to terms with which date it actually happened because she claims that this was the following day. I remember in her story she talked about having like work the next day so maybe this was like after work time or right before work time or I don't really honestly know, but I do think that these receipts and such, they can help you sometimes, but they can also hurt you because if you don't exactly remember when, other fans might, especially when it comes to someone like Melanie because she is so heavily followed. So there are a few reasons why people believe that Timothy is lying. Let's go through those quickly. And again, I have to say it makes me sick to my stomach that people are even like assessing this situation so technically. But I also understand because it's one of their favorite people and they can't believe that this has happened. But one of the reasons why people believe that this is a lie is because of the whole date situation, because we can't really narrow down a date. If you guys think to like, OK, so we've got pictures posted from the day after the incident. And as you guys can see, Melanie has blonde hair. And on the day of the incident, she was traveling from New York to L.A. with her blonde hair. So why did Timothy go and submit a picture of Melanie with this brown and blue hair and the handcuffs? Because I guess it's trying to fit into this narrative that they played this game with this handcuffs and it led to one thing, led to another and such. But it doesn't really like help at the end of the day if things aren't lining up because Melanie's hair is really the main reason why people are like, OK, that did not happen that night because the orange, you know, cardigan with the handcuffs that wasn't taken at the same time. And honestly, that's something I can't really wrap my mind around is why would she submit a photo that was actually taken in May that could be proven to be taken in May? I have no idea, but that's one of the main reasons why people believe that Timothy is lying about this situation. Uh, people also believe that maybe Timothy's jealous of Melanie and her success because they are both singer and songwriters and Melanie is so super famous now. But I do feel like that's kind of like a sick like reasoning to think about like what like lying about this type of thing. Like, I don't know. I, I it may, honestly makes me disgusted that we have to go and like, you know, break down the situation. But I also do recognize it's important because we did see that Newsweek posted a straight up lie by including that photo and claiming that was the night of the incident if it wasn't actually the night of the incident. So I don't know. And Timothy never clarified on like what actually happened or what actual date or, you know, if she ever learned anything or realized anything or anything like that. Actually, she deleted her post on Twitter about Melanie. So it seems like Timothy has kind of like retracted from the situation. And I don't know if maybe she was like, you know, cease and desisted and like shut up or uh, if she didn't want to go and press charges or whatever. But I do find it fascinating because I was a fan of Melanie's. I'm still a fan of Melanie's music. But when I heard about these allegations back in the day, I was shook. And honestly, it was huge news at the time. So it's a little bit. Oh, my gosh. There are some sirens going off. <gasps> Is the world about to end? But um, honestly, 
Do you hear that? I wonder if you guys can hear that. But anyways, um, I find it a little bit uh, concerning on how this story kind of just like stopped and nobody ever talked about it again, because I do think that, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. And I do feel like something went down. Like I started off this video, I said there are two sides to the story and the truth. And I do feel like Timothy needs to go and speak her truth. But I also do recognize that they're in a world of Hollywood and, you know, um, tabloids and magazines and like that. And, you know, it's competition at the end of the day. And actually, Timothy has done certain things online that I find a little bit questionable. In this instance, Timothy was replying to to the band Smash Mouth and wrote, okay, this song is great, Smash Mouth, but Adam22 is an R wordist. Please do not give him any attention. Pretty much claiming that Adam22, the guy that runs No Jumper, has like R worded someone before. Well, she quickly deleted that tweet because Adam22 quote retweeted her and said, this girl is literally famous for falsely accusing another girl of R wording her, and she's out here spreading lies to Smash Mouth about me. Get out of here. It's a dangerous dangerous game when you're out here trying to push a narrative that these people are criminals or have R-worded people before because those again are such serious crimes and nobody plays games like that. So I do think it's really interesting to see how this story developed because I do feel like the media really ran with Timothy's story at first and then the fans started picking things apart and honestly I don't want to act like oh I'm like I'm trying to call Timothy a liar because again I do believe something happened here but I also feel like there are the, the information has been misconstrued in ways to try to push like I guess a narrative that people aren't going to listen to her because Melanie is a woman and I do feel like our world has really grown in the sense that we do start holding women more accountable and there are creepy women out here I mean I've made several videos about women in Hollywood who have done horrible things so the narrative is switching up and we don't really need like you know certain things to push it over the edge like I do feel like the whole like orange like cardigan with the like you know with the handcuffs like that was just such a big like a big no-no in this situation and maybe she, maybe the incident happened in may maybe she like you know just couldn't really remember which date it happened but at the same time like when you are going to the press and you are telling them to go and publish these things like you need to really be confident in what you're saying or at least be upfront that you're not confident in what you're saying so i want to hear what you guys think in the comments below i find it really interesting because i am a huge fan of melanie's but i want to hear what you guys think in the comments below again i feel like something totally didn't happen but like who really knows and i'm not the one here to determine whether someone's guilty or not that is i want to make that really upfront and uh, known that i'm not the one who can say whether you're guilty or not but let's go ahead and open this peel box package item it looks like it's from alia 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 okay cool and it looks like she's located on the West Coast. Cool. I'm actually going to the West Coast soon to LA for a free Britney rally. It's going to be my first time in LA. So I'm really excited about that because I've never been there before. But I'm also kind of scared. So we'll have to see what happens there. But let's go ahead and see what she sent me here. If you guys want to go check out her small brand or company below. I don't know if this is a company or not. But you guys know that I love to give shout outs to your brands and your companies because we love small businesses on this channel and I love to give you guys free promo. So let's go ahead and see what she sent me here. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, um, it looks like she sent like a mug, but let's go see if there's a letter. I guess I opened this on the wrong side. So, oh, so cute. Okay. So here is the letter. Let's go ahead and open it. I love how she has like an, a sticker here and she has my name on it and a really cute like envelope too. Thank you. Uh, oh my gosh, and a picture. Oh, so cute. I love that. Oh my God. Uh, thank you. Dear Sloan, please accept this little tea set I put together for you. Aya label is my very own knitwear label that I started less than a year ago and the dark age that was 2020. I design a brand new themed collection of handmade, hand knit home goods and knitwear by yearly. The coaster I included in this package was an experiment I made for you that will be featured in my next collection this fall. Aww. I highly appreciate you for covering relevant topics on your channel. I raise my cup of tea to you. Oh my gosh, what a sweet letter. Let's go ahead and see what she sent me over here. So it looks like she's got, oh my gosh, some tea right here, which we love. If you guys wanna go check out her shop, it's below. Oh, look how cute this is, little coaster. Oh my gosh, it is so cute. I used to be like into crocheting, but this is so much prettier than anything I made. And she's got a whole label on it. And then she sent me this mug right here with her brand on it, which is so cute. Is it called? Atala? Atala? I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. I think it's actually Atala. 
Atala, I'm so sorry if I said your name wrong, but it says Atala label and look at that. <gasps> so cute, Atala. Oh my gosh, definitely go and support her brand. We love this on this channel. Thank you guys so much. And if you guys have any other video ideas for me, here's my email below. But until next time, I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye guys.